So if you want to get started with teaching yourself how to code, or you want to learn a new programming language, sometimes you can get stuck in a world known as tutorial hell, which is basically a place where all your hopes and dreams go to die. I mean, okay, it's not that deep, but it can be pretty frustrating to just be constantly following tutorials and feel like you're not making any progress. So you go speak to someone with more experience, and all they say is, just go and build something. Now that's pretty surface level advice for someone starting something new. So we're here to make your life easier and actually give meaning to the phrase, just go and build something. The first thing to do is to define your project. You want to ask yourself these four main questions. What is my project? What would be the absolutely essential features that I need to build for my project? AKA, what's my minimum viable product? What are some nice features that I could add to my essential features? And what kind of application will I build? And this might be a bit controversial in the software industry that follows agile principles, but you might ask yourself, when will I complete my project? So let's actually try it out now. We're going to try and plan out an inventory manager. So firstly, what is my project? The inventory manager is a project to handle and track all the different items and how many there are within your inventory. What is my MVP? The MVP would allow the user to enter the name, the cost, the selling price, and the quantity of each item in their inventory, along with displaying all of this information. The user would also have to enter the number of each item sold during the day. What are some nice to have features? Alert the user if they're running low on a product, or automatically deduct products being sold from the quantity in the product manager app, or the ability to set up automatic repurchases of products running low. What kind of application will I build? My application will be a web application. If you're having trouble choosing what programming language to use for the application you're trying to build, don't worry, we have a video on this linked in the description. Defining your project like this in a simple way makes it much clearer for you and keeps you in check instead of just being stuck in tutorial hell. The next step is to track your project. As software engineers, we typically use a Kanban board to track our project. To start off, just use the columns we use here. To do, doing, and done. If you're working on a project with a friend, you can have an optional column of in review so that you and your friend can peer review each other's work. Then you can start filling up your board with cards to move around based on your progress with your project. A card, or story if you're using the Agile methodology, is simply the smallest unit of work. To create one, you'll need to break down your biggest features. Let's take our inventory manager. One of our features is to allow the user to enter the name, the cost, the selling price, and the quantity of their product. We can break this down into individual components, front end and back end. Let's go with front end. So you'll need a text box for each field and the product so that the user can enter the information. Then you'll want to validate each field being entered. For the quantity field, you might want the user to only enter numbers. Finally, you'll want to make a call to your backend to handle storing the item in your database. What constitutes a story is typically based on what you feel is the smallest unit of work. For us, we feel comfortable with having a story for allowing the user to enter the information and a story for the validation of each field. So now we know what our features are, and we know how we can break them down into the smallest unit of work. So how do we go about our project? Well, you can repeat the process we've just done over and over for all your features. We find that working on one component at a time is a good way to build your project. It avoids constantly having to switch context, which makes it a really efficient way to build your project. But at the end of the day, it all depends on what you feel most comfortable with. Remember, getting some work done is better than getting no work done. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please share this with your future co-founders and give us a like and subscribe. Catch you in the next one.